you're watching Telecom TV from the MEF 17 event in Orlando. And I'm joined now by Gabrielle Kerner, who is Vice President, Network Products and Offerings, Amdocs Technology. Gabrielle, good to see you on Telecom TV. I'm good to see you. You're speaking here at the MEF 17 event on service lifecycle management, the road ahead. What, what is the current situation and, and, and how do we need to evolve and improve? If we look at uh, the current uh, you know, approach that we're taking, uh, both together with ONAP uh, as well as uh, um, with the MEF, um, services until now uh, can be fairly defined as uh, being static. So you know how to define a service, you activate, you fulfill it, but then to run it uh, across multiple carriers, across uh, multiple changing uh, environments, um, to have a restoration and protection mechanism for the services, I think we have still some work to do. So until now we are concentrating on connectivity services between point A and point B, moving forward into much more agile, dynamic application-driven services in which you had multiple type of functions uh, you know, derived from uh, NFV, uh, you need to abstract the layers between the customer service, the network service, uh, and the network itself, but you also need to put focus on the actual uh, management of this service along its life cycle. We are, we are getting there. We are getting quite mature into actually orchestrating uh, the service, um, activating it, um, provise, provisioning a, a VNF. Um, but we cannot talk about NFV or Agile services without actually thinking into their life cycle. So where are we right now? Well, we have a quite a, a mature ecosystem for uh, designing services, running them, uh, fulfilling them and activating them. Uh, but moving ahead, and especially moving into the application uh, domain, um, you cannot move into NFV without actually thinking about uh, the what-if scenario, the assurance mechanism, the flexible bandwidth situations, uh, the restoration mechanism. So we need to take beyond what we know how to do in the connectivity services, a step back and try to think what will happen to the application services and how the intertwin between connectivity and application services will be uh, managed along their life cycle. Um, a lot of the work that we do right now with the MEF and of course uh, with ONAP is to define not just uh, activating or fulfilling those services, but also defining the policy mechanism, um, the design environment in order to create uh, a service that will be managed along its life cycle. Also, not just at one service provider, but across the end-to-end -end service, which might span, of course, uh, geographies, domains, and service providers. So here at MEF 17, one of the main news announcements was the release of MEF 3.0. How does this fit in? How does this help? We can look at the MEF as being the articulation mechanism um, around how to build the services and how to maintain them along their life cycle. Uh, MEF 3.0 provides actually a framework for the community to align how the service should be run, how those interfaces should be uh, defined, uh, what APIs need to make what type of uh, information transparent and manageable. Uh, MEF 3.0 is actually, I would say, the framework making it formalized across the multiple entities, be it service providers, vendors, partners, and so on. You've been looking at, and you've got a showcase here at this event, the, this intercarrier connectivity. We're starting to hear a lot more about intercarrier connectivity in this east-west relationship. Why is this important? Thinking about, again, a, a typical end customer service, right? He is generally not bound by a domain or a geography. Uh, you know, imagine a typical enterprise which has offices across the world. Uh, he's going to ask for his service provider, please provide me an end to end network. Uh, and please, please provide me agility on it, please provide me new functions. It's not just about intercarrier connectivity, but it's about intercarrier orchestration of the end to end service including the connectivity at the technical level, but also the applications, the order management, uh, and so on. And so we, what we've done here in this uh, showcase is actually quite revolutionary. We, we took um, ONAP uh, platform for the orchestration across a different service provider. We took um, orchestration at business level, and especially we integrated the Sonata, Interlude, and Cantata interfaces that we have been defining with the MEF, demonstrating that we can use those interfaces to actually create, automate, and manage 
uh, an end-to-end -end service even in remote and off-net locations. So th th this collaboration you mentioned, you've got the, the MEF APIs, you, you've got ONAP, um, is this an example of how the industry needs to move forward? We, 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 need, to, we need to collaborate and, and, and broaden our approach. Oh, absolutely. So you see, this is the whole point, not only of the showcase, but also especially on you know, what we do around the, the MEF. It's not anymore one vendor provide one solution to one customer. You have multiple service provider. In the example of the showcase, you have Colt, AT&T, and Orange. Working together, you have multiple vendors and partners. In our case, in, in this showcase, it's Siena, Fujitsu, Amdocs. Working in a kind of an ecosystem environment to make sure that the service at the end can be run, uh, providing a unified experience uh, to the end customers. Um, you know, agility of the futures um, cannot anymore be bound in a silo, neither a domain nor a vendor. Um, we have to look at it holistically across a community and ecosystems, and we have kind of to open our doors uh, to everybody or, or to the relevant interface to be able to uh, adapt, to integrate, uh, and to seamlessly cooperate with each other. I think we demonstrated that very well in this showcase, but uh, it's also really one of the uh, founding principle of, of one, why the MEF is, uh, is here. Gabriel, thank you very much indeed. Uh, thank you.